On This Week in Jacksonville, unwilling to give up or let up, we'll let the veteran leading the way make the announcement. It is time for Jacksonville to have a symbol of the United States Navy and what the United States Navy has meant to Jacksonville and its development. One of the last destroyers built in the World War II era, the USS Orlick is officially on the way to become a floating museum on the St. Johns River. Plus, celebrating 50 years, the University of North Florida measures its successes and sets goals for the future. The interim president joins us on This Week in Jacksonville. So glad you are with us today. So what a journey in getting a warship to Jacksonville at a Naval Museum on the banks of downtown. It's a journey I've been monitoring since I arrived in the city and a journey taken by local attorney and Navy veteran Daniel Bean, president of the Jacksonville Naval Ship Association. Captain Bean is joining us today by Zoom. Uh, so Dan, your, your reaction first, you signed the papers and the USS Orlick belongs to Jacksonville now. How, satif how satisfying, I should say, is that for you? Uh, tremendously satisfying. Uh, you know, it's been a long 12 year journey. Um, and this milestone this week and being able to take ownership of a former Navy warship uh, is huge for us. And, um, you know, it's really coming down to the final items that we need to get done to actually physically bring her here, uh, hopefully in February, late February. So tell us a little bit about the USS Orlick and why this particular vessel will become part of the Jacksonville skyline. Sure. Well, you know, frankly, it started <clears throat> almost uh, three years ago when um, we decided to stop pursuing the USS Charles F. Adams. The Navy had made a determination that they were not going to uh, donate her. And, um, uh, and so we, you know, we had permission to bring a Navy warship here. We had a pier. We just didn't have a ship. And so we went to social media and virtually the same day that we went to social media to announce that we were not going to pursue the USS Charles F. Adams anymore, we got a phone call from the folks in Louisiana and they had um, the Orlick and they needed to move the Orlick um, for reasons. So they had a ship, uh, but they didn't have a pier and we had a pier, but didn't have a ship. And so that's, that started a three-year relationship in which we've funded the Orlick and the operations down there and did all kinds of testing, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of testing, insurance, things of that nature. And then to get it to the point where we moved it uh, oh, two weeks ago by um, tug, a tremendously gratifying day for us to actually physically move the ship off the pier. And then uh, we towed it to Port Arthur, the Gulf Copper shipyard, uh, for what we knew would be the ultimate test, which is an ultrasonic test on the hull to make sure that the, the remaining $1.2 million investment we had in repairs set aside would be money well spent. And so we were very pleased to find that the hull ultrasonic test was satisfactory. I mean, the ship is 77 years old, and so these things don't last forever. Um, but <clears throat> the, uh, the shipyard folks, and we felt that um, after all the inspections and engineers and things of that nature, that um, we, we would go ahead with the, uh, the investment, uh, remaining investment to repair it and then bring it here. Um, and then frankly, you know, we'll start to look to replace her uh, down the road five, seven years. So we've seen some of the renderings. We're just showing some videos, mm -hmm. uh, both of uh, what the ship looks like now. It's been, you know, the repairs going on. Maybe mm -hmm. explain for us where the ship will dock, where people will be able to find it once it is here in Jacksonville. Well, initially it will be at Pier 1, which is the pier closest to the Berkman 2 Plaza until that comes down. Uh, but I think people can identify it. It's the, you know, there's a marina there on, by Berkman 2. We'll be on the other side of that pier just in case one of those sailboats gets away and we don't get a attacked by a sailboat. Uh, so we'll have some protection there, but that'll be the pier that we're at. That pier will be longer than the warship itself. Um, we'll have uh, stern to the land so that people will um, enter the warship from the stern. We'll have a brow over to uh, the shipyard proper area. So people won't be walking on the pier initially. Um, and um, so there'll be some work to be done on the pier by the city, um, but that'll be over time. I think the city still needs to decide what the ultimate shipyard picture looks like, we felt that, um, you know, we have our ideas of a veterans park and moving the memorial wall from the from a the NFL stadium to a more serene and somber location, and to have sort of a veterans park anchored by the warship. Exactly where that veterans park would go remains to be seen, but we felt that you know we could really push the issue by bringing the warship here, 
Um, and frankly, the outpouring of people in the last three or four days has been tremendous. Uh, my e inbox is full of emails. I'm getting phone calls from people that want to help. And, um, you know, we kind of anticipated that this would be the reaction of the public and we're very gratified by it. Yeah. So uh, briefly, I'm told the costs of moving the ship from uh, Louisiana and from Port Arthur, Texas to Jacksonville, that they've increased. Is the money there to make this happen? Yep, the money is there now. I mean, obviously, the more money we have, the more uh, improvements we can do to the warship itself. Um, but, you know, we have our budgets and um, we'll be able to tow the ship here. Uh, there'll be tow away money set aside um, that in case in the event that there was any any type of a default or any uh, uh, inability to sustain uh, operations. So, so, you know, last night, the city citizens of Jacksonville coughed up $1.2 million to fix or take down the Berkman 2 Plaza. That's not going to be an issue with us because we, as part of our agreement with the city, we've set aside almost, we'll set aside uh, four hundred to $500,000 for a tow away in the event that we're not successful. Obviously, we believe we'll be successful our studies show success and uh, all the different things we can do with the ship. Um, and uh, But we just felt it was uh, prudent uh, as citizens of Jacksonville yeah. to have this built in. So that success comes mm -hmm. over time. Dan Bean, you and I got to know each other during your extensive mm -hmm. efforts to bring the USS Charles <laughs> yeah. F. Adams to Jacksonville. First guided missile destroyer, commissioned in 1960, 21 years posted, uh, ported at Mayport. Yeah. Ultimately, though, that ship, we were showing you here, and the plans to bring her, they were scrapped. How disappointing right. was that? And then how did Orlick come into the picture? Well, um, you know, it was incredibly disappointing with the Adams. The Adams had, you know, was home ported here. That was my very first ship as a midshipman. Um, there was a lot of different synergies. It would have been the youngest warship on display in America. Um, and so, you know, that was very disappointing. And frankly, we weren't, I was not happy with the, with the way the Navy handled that. Um, and um, so, you know, one feeling that we had when the Navy finally said, or we finally said to the Navy, look, we're not gonna try to pursue her anymore, was thank good, you know, thank goodness, and we don't have to waste any more time with the Navy. The Orlick is not owned by the Navy. There's no role for the Navy here with the Orlick. Um, the Orlick was transferred by the United States to Turkey back in the 80s, and then uh, a nonprofit group in the United States purchased the Orlick and brought it to Texas and ultimately to Louisiana. And frankly, um, Kent, and I really do appreciate the opportunity to appear on your show again, that's what we're going to do with the repair with the replacement ship. And so when we will start to work with a foreign nation um, that receive Navy warships and try to effectuate the same type of plan, but make sure that we get a ship that's much younger um, than the Orlick so that we can uh, truly have uh, one of the youngest warships. Well, we would have the youngest warship on display in Jacksonville. The Orlick's history is that it was, uh, it was commissioned in 1945 at the very tail end of World War II. Its history mainly is with Vietnam. It was the warship, the Navy warship with the most um, gunfire support of any warship in the Navy at the time. She's called the Great Ghost for that reason. Um, and so unlike all the other ships on display in our country, we will accentuate the Vietnam experience because no other warship does that. Yeah. Uh, and to pay tribute to those folks that served during the Vietnam and try to thank them again in another different way, but also to um, you know distinguish ourselves so that when people come to the Orlick, they'll be it'll be a different type of experience. We didn't want to focus on World War II because frankly, almost all the other warships on display in the country focus on World War II. We're going to be the first to focus on Vietnam. Yeah, it's uh, like I said, impressive uh, that it's finally happening here and really cool for me and I'm sure for a lot of people to see you sign that document this week right. and say, we have now taken possession of this this ship that's a museum that's gonna, it's gonna encourage people and celebrate uh, so many uh, people who are in our area. Dan Bean, I appreciate the time and congratulations. Uh, we'll look forward mm -hmm. to visiting again at that next step. Kent, we'll look forward to hosting your show on board the Orlick in the future, okay? Great idea, yeah, thank you, Captain Dan. Yes, sir. Thank you, take uh, care. A long journey to bring that museum to the area. Well, long ago, an idea led to the creation of a local university. We are joined by the interim president at UNF next on This Week in Jacksonville. At Farrah and Farrah, we specialize in accidents involving commercial trucks. Call for a free consultation. And if we don't win, you don't pay.
That's good. Since my mother got cancer from smoking, I've learned a lot of things. Like how to help her out of bed, how to help her in the bath, how to keep track of her medication, and how to keep her spirits up. Sleep well. I love you. Tobacco-Free Florida offers free nicotine patches to help start your quit journey. 1-877-YOU-CAN-NOW. At Affordable Dentures and Implants, that moment when we see a patient smile is everything to us. So whether it's a single tooth, full dentures, or dental implants, we're here to help you. Go ahead and smile. Go ahead and smile. Go ahead and smile. Go ahead and smile. New year, new start. And now Comcast Business is making it easy to get going with the Ready, Set, Save sale. Get started with fast and reliable internet and voice for $35 each a month when you buy both with a two-year price guarantee. It's easy with flexible installation and backing from an expert team 24-7. And ask how to get free installation and one month free. Get a great deal for your business with the Ready, Set, Save sale today. Comcast Business, powering possibilities. The Wolfson Children's Challenge celebrates children who've received care at Wolfson Children's Hospital. This family-oriented event features a 55K ultra marathon, a 55K relay, a 30K individual race, and a one-mile fun run for kids. Get more information at WolfsonChildrensChallenge.com. America, home of the free. Free is our favorite word. Oh. Like free refills. We get it. <laughs> That's why at Morgan & Morgan, our fee is free. That means you don't pay anything unless we win your case. Injured? Call Morgan & Morgan. For the people.com. It's free! The heart of life is about community, lifting up people around you. This year, join us in Random Jacks of Kindness, a year-long commitment to paying it forward with acts big and small. This Martin Luther King Jr. Day, News 4 Jacks and Feeding Northeast Florida are collecting non-perishable food for local families. Drop off your donation at the Channel 4 studio or donate online. Practice Random Jacks of Kindness all year. Sign the pledge on PositivelyJacks.com. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. The University of North Florida has kicked off its 50th anniversary this year. Interim President Pamela Challey joined me recently to speak about the growth, development, and impact that UNF has made and will continue to make in the Northeast Florida community. What started, or we started, I should say, is I asked Dr. Challey how excited she is for the celebration. UNF is 50 years old in 2022 and i just think that's amazing that we have been around for for 50 years and that is the big thing that we want to be able to tell people about so how long have you been associated because this has been much of your career right much of my career i've been here since 1993 so so over half of the 50 years I've been associated with the University of North Florida. I came here as an, uh, as an associate professor um, and then just kind of moved up as a dean, got to be an interim provost. And now in this very important and big year, I'm the interim president. Tell me about uh, the nature of being an interim president, an outstanding university, when you're going through something like this, celebrating. And obviously it's not just looking back, but it's looking forward. We've done 50 years, we're gonna do 50 more that are incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, that seems like that could be a lot of pressure, but a lot of fun at the same time. I feel um, very privileged to be able to be here during the 50th year. I was meeting with a faculty friend that I've known for a long time and she said, you get to be the president during the 50th year? That's just amazing, Pam. And that's kind of how I've been feeling too. You know, being the interim president isn't something that I really expected, um, but I'm so appreciative for the opportunity. And, and what this allows me to do is to go back, review the history, think about the 
how how the campus and the university have changed over the last almost 30 years that I've been here. But I also get to put a mark on the future of the university. And we certainly look forward to a new permanent president. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, but but I get to um, make some decisions and, and work with individuals to make sure that we are well positioned for the next 50 years. There's some great resources online that, that UNF is sharing about mm -hmm. the history. And I was really captivated by it. it was all the way back to like 1963 when the idea first sprang in the state Senate. Hey, we need a university for Duval County. How has UNF fulfilled that and grown over the years? We started in the fall of, of 72 with 2,027 students, I think, was the exact number. We, we were a two-year school and we had a few graduate programs. So basically, we had juniors and seniors and a small number of graduate programs. Now we have over 17,000 students. We have around 60, I, I believe it's 60 baccalaureate programs and, and probably almost that many graduate programs, master's programs, and then three doctoral programs. So that's an indication of how much we have grown as a university. But you mentioned a few seconds ago about how the community said, we need a university in this part of the state. And, and you know, I have always, always believed that UNF is what it is today because of our community. I started in healthcare and here at UNF. And, and of course, there's such a close tie between healthcare organizations, the hospitals, the long-term care, I mean, all the healthcare businesses and, and how you would educate healthcare professionals. But now that I have an opportunity to understand even more about the entire university, it's just so clear to me that, that the community is has given so much to us. I hope that the community will look at this as not only a celebration for UNF, but a celebration of their commitment to higher education and to creating a place where students can earn degrees and advanced degrees. Why not speak for a moment about some of those partnerships, some of those community efforts there, because I think of Brooks Rehabilitation, okay, here's somebody who's sponsored or donated. There are others in the community who have said, we want to be part of UNF and its success, right? Oh, there's so many. And, and certainly Brooks Rehabilitation, which named the Brooks College of Health, but we have um, the Coggin College of Business. We just um, had a, a wonderful, wonderful donation from the Skinner family. Um, Crowley just gave us a very large um, gift that will help us be able to work through increasingly more logistics. Um, we work very close, you name the business and, and we work closely with them. Another thing, that's been so exciting is our relationship with Johnson and Johnson. You know, Johnson and Johnson does their 3D printing in the United States on our campus. Um, I didn't really realize that until I became the interim president. But remember a while ago when we were so short of ventilators in the not only in our city, but across the country. And so what they started to do was they use splitters these splitters so that the this little piece of equipment was hooked up to a ventilator and then it would split off so that one side would go to one patient and another side would go to another. Well, Johnson & Johnson printed all those on our campus and then gave them away. Uh, they were free to anyone that needed them. Just another example of how working with the community has benefited our university tremendously. Students got to get to be a part of all these projects, but how it's also benefited Jacksonville and beyond. How does UNF stack up against older and more widely known schools in the state? Well, more of my interview with the interim president when we continue on This Week in Jacksonville.
Veterans, you may have earned a variety of VA benefits. Did you know VA can help you further your education and pursue professional training? The Home Loan Guarantee Program can help you buy, repair, or adapt a home. VA provides housing support if you find yourself homeless or at risk of homelessness. And don't forget world-class health care. Learn more about these and other VA benefits. Visit choose.va.gov. <laughs> Every time. Shh. You think she's still awake? Don't worry. Stealth mode? Yeah. Okay, shh. <laughs> Don't PT meetings end at nine. Oh, Rand. got lost. Wait, what'd you guys talk about? Oh, the um, Max. libraries. Fine. You can drive to practice this weekend. <laughs> well, that was easy. What? I mean, I love you guys. The Lexus RX, built for modern families. Elegant styles, excellent values, an undeniable oasis. It's all yours and more during Tommy Bahama Month at Bears Furniture. For a limited time, take 50% off all Lexington and Tommy Bahama products, our lowest prices of the year. We're the world's largest in-stock Tommy Bahama retailer with designs, materials, and finishes unique to our location. Transform your home into an everlasting utopia with a brand made for every occasion. Paradise awaits at Bears Furniture. Don't let inconvenient weather crash your plans. Blue skies in the morning, showers and storms cranking up. Chief Meteorologist John Gahn and The Weather Authority. Your forecast is our forte. We've got cloudy and damp conditions. Exact Track 4D, counting in every minute to expect delays. Oak Leaf in about 40 minutes' time. Whether you're a rock star parent or steering wheel soloist, stay tapped in and never miss a beat. If you have the Weather Authority app, you just got an alert. The Weather Authority on News 4 Jax. Always watching, always tracking. When the I-Team investigates, results happen. Do you feel bad taking money from people? I don't know how much money you saved me, but at least $400. Very, very, very happy. Thanks to you guys. So you started it. Fighting for what's right. Standing up for local families. The governor signing into a law. Something that came out of an I-Team investigation. You guys did a great job. Hey, y'all, you know, jump right on it. I-Team, get results. The News 4 Jack's I-Team. Uncovering. Exposing getting results. We've spent years building relationships with the insurance companies and all the, the companies and the lawyers that we have to deal with. The other side knows we're capable of fighting. We're going to do what's best for that client in, in their case. Just because you say that you can go fight doesn't necessarily make it true. The respect that you've earned through the decades of being committed in a particular community that really does the speaking. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville on Channel 4. We're continuing the conversation I had this week with Dr. Pamela Challey. She was appointed interim president at UNF in August, beginning her term in September. UNF is number one in the state university system in the percentage of graduates employed in Florida in the first year following graduation. You can imagine how proud she is to discuss that achievement. We do receive a significant proportion of our resources from the state. And isn't it wonderful that we can tout um, appropriately that our students stay in the state of Florida. So, um, and that's because of the relationships that we have um, in this community and, and actually around the state. So um, nurses that are educated here at, at UNF, most of them stay in this area, but if they don't stay in this area, most of them stay in Florida. And I can go through education, I can go through engineering. Um, we truly are very, very proud that, that we sometimes call ourselves the job university um, because our students um, find jobs and they stay in Florida. Tell me what's next. What does the future hold for UNF? How are there changes in, in the school known for innovation? How is that innovation playing out at UNF right now? One of the things that you're going to see is that we're going to continue to grow. I, um, we are at a, around 17,000 students and, and as Jacksonville is growing, it's important that we meet the needs of our community, our regional area and, and the state of Florida. Florida is in a position, as everybody knows, that they are really growing. 
So what other innovation? Um, I'm really happy to be able to announce that this week, I just found out that um, we have been designated an R2 university. That means that we're a university that has high research. This is a designation that we never had before. You have to have a certain amount of money um, that that is that you receive from research and development activities. And then you also need to graduate a certain number of doctorates. So, so your question about innovation and where are we going, this, this research background that started many years ago will just continue to grow and, and we'll be able to continue to participate in new and exciting research projects and innovations. As this 50th year happens for UNF, is there any competitive nature here? Hey, we, we, want, we want to be better than UF at this particular thing or Florida State or, you know, or Jacksonville University. Is there something that UNF says, no, we are going to be number one in that and everybody's going to know it? First of all, uh, we want to beat Jacksonville University in basketball this weekend. <laughs> I, I will say that. Okay. All right. So, you know, we we always want to do better in in areas. We think we have some very, very strong programs and we want to see those programs continue uh, to grow in excellence and, and probably in size. We like being the university that that where students stay, um, where students find jobs in Florida. We like that and we're very, very proud of that. But we're just going to continue on an upward trajectory. There's something Osprey about that, right? <laughs> it's a swoop. You got it. <laughs> it's a big swoop. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and as the University of North Florida celebrates 50 years, the beginning goes back even further to the early 1960s when the demand rose up for a local university in Duval County. UNF first opened its doors to 2,027 students in 1972. It's grown to presently serving 17,000 students in six colleges. The school has developed into a top-ranked university recognized nationally by U.S. News & World Report for innovation, value, and engagement. Well, we don't have the date pinned down yet, but we're working to get the final two candidates in a special election for city council to join us. Tracy Polson and Nick Howland, they both say they're interested, so look for that this month. This Week in Jacksonville airs each Sunday morning at this time. I'm Kent Justice. Thanks for watching on air on Channel 4 and the CW17 and online at news4jax.com. See why every day more people are choosing News 4 Jax, Northeast Florida, and South Georgia's number one source for local news.